Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here. And I just posted my unboxing video on the new Google Pixel Fold. I can link to that below if you wanna check it out after this video. However, I have some more thoughts and opinions on Google's latest folding device. And actually a little bit ago, Google gave me an early sneak peek of the Pixel Fold out in New York. So I did get a full hands on there and obviously I have the device here. Speaking of New York, does anyone remember this video and pay attention to the backdrop? Hey everyone. Tim Schofield here. It's time to do my full unboxing of the Google Pixel 3 XL. This is the white color. That was the roof of the hotel that I stayed at for the Pixel 3 launch. And it was only fitting I stayed in that exact same hotel to get the hands on with Google's first foldable phone. Pretty cool, came full circle. It made me realize how long I've been doing this. So thank you for all the support you guys have given over the years. Now, in my opinion, with folding phones, the hardware is only as good as the software can keep up with it. The software needs to be a little bit different and work in different ways than a regular candy bar style phone would. So in this video, we'll talk about software, hardware, some things that I found interesting in this phone and actually camera samples with video as well. So let's get started on my hands-on and impressions with the Google Pixel Fold. To begin, color options. I saw the obsidian and the porcelain if you're debating between the two. And to be honest, they both really do look great. You can't go wrong with either. The metal trim on the obsidian is a little darker than the trim on the porcelain. For me, after seeing them both, I might lean more towards porcelain, but I do kind of go back and forth. But again, either way, you can't go wrong. First thing you'll notice is how thin it is while folded. Yes, a little bit thicker than a regular phone, but still considering this phone opens up, it's surprising how thin it is and it lays flat, which gives it a more premium look and feel. And considering that feel, since the corners are rounded and straight. If you hold it in your left hand, it's a little bit more uncomfortable. It's comfortable to hold in your right hand, which most people are right-handed, but when you unfold it completely, both corners are rounded, so it's comfortable to hold. The hinge itself does feel very premium. You can hold it at multiple angles, which can be used in certain apps. One thing I got a lot of questions on in my unboxing video is, can it open flat or does it stop? And the answer is yes, it opens up flat. Uh, it's just when you get to the end, if you don't give it a little bit more of a pull when you're opening it, it won't necessarily open all the way. It'll sit just barely, maybe 179 degrees. But when you have it all the way pulled, it sits flat 180 degrees. The screen itself is fairly reflective, especially if there's a lot of light in the room and that crease is noticeable. You can feel it and see it depending on the content that's on the display. It is IPX8 water resistant, but not dust resistant. So I can notice some dust kind of getting in the screen when I have it in my jeans pocket. For example, it hasn't been too bad yet. I thought it was going to be worse considering it didn't have that dust resistance rating. But I also want to point out that it is tested uh, Google says up to 200,000 folds. Quickly got hands-on with the official case and I really like it. It has a lot of grip, more of a softer touch feel. It's really nice, I would definitely consider it. The fingerprint unlock works really well, works as it should. I also wanna point out you can use face unlock and fingerprint at the same time. For face unlock, you can have it skip the lock screen so it unlocks right away when you look at the phone or you can have it go straight to the lock screen but unlocked. Something interesting about face unlock, it works fine on the front screen Screen, but when you open the phone, it will go straight to the lock screen, but it doesn't activate that inside camera to use face unlock. Interesting why. I wonder if it's because to open the phone, you need two hands regardless. So your thumb's going to be right where it needs to be to unlock it, or maybe the camera doesn't have the capabilities. I'll reach out to Google and in my full review, I will uh, let you guys know what they say. All right, on to the software. Like I said, your foldable is only as good as your software is going to let it be. It needs to have additional features. Something interesting, the inside display just mirrors your front screen. So if you have two pages with specific apps and you open it on up, those two pages are just going to be mirrored on the inside. The front screen's very comfortable to use. It's wider than other foldables out there, so it's easier to type on. Apps that you have open on the front screen will continue Continue when you open the phone, it will stay unlocked. And certain apps will change based on the phone's orientation, how you're holding it, whether it be more horizontal or the vertical way with that 6.5 inside display. Gmail, for example, will show side by side with a list of your emails, full email on the right. However, if you do go with that vertical orientation, it just pulls up 
that full email to see it in full screen. Other apps like Spotify, Settings, TikTok, take advantage of that full inside display. Others have some black bars on the side, and that, in my opinion, is more on the developer side of things. Hopefully they sort of catch up now that Google has an official foldable on Android. Something really interesting that Google has chosen to go with is deciding for you which applications will continue on the front screen after you have them open on the inside screen. So say for example, you have YouTube open or the camera app open and you close the phone, it will continue on the front screen. It'll stay unlocked and continue the application on the front screen. On the other hand, apps such as Chrome will not continue on the front screen. When you close the phone, it will just lock it and you will need to re-unlock it to get back to that application that will be open. It doesn't close the application, it just locks the phone. In my opinion, simple solution would be to choose on a per app basis which apps will continue on the front screen, which ones won't. Phones like the Moto Razor Plus, for example, have that per app choice to continue on the front screen. So again, that's just my opinion, something I'd like. I'd like a little more control over that. Nice little feature is you can choose auto rotate whether the phone is folded or unfolded. Really happy they included that. This phone does have the Tensor G2 processor inside. More on that in the full review. I need a little more time to test it uh, with the folding phone in terms of battery life and performance. I really do like having that app tray at the bottom. Just a quick little swipe up and you have your favorite shortcuts to apps. You can quickly drag and drop applications to go side by side between two. And you can even drag and drop in between applications for example, between photos and messages, you could just drag a photo over from your gallery, drop it in and send it away. Taking photos with the rear camera and having the front screen can be a little awkward. You have to press a b two buttons to have it switch screens to the front. And right now you can't use the inside screen and the outside screen at the same time. That is coming with Android 14. If you turn on a timer, for your pictures and you hold up your hand, it will find it and start that timer. I do kind of wish you could hold your hand up with a timer off and it would count down to from three maybe to take a picture so you don't have to sort of awkwardly press the button or the side button. Either way, I do think the user experience could be a little bit better with the rear camera and having the front screen utilized. All right, just a quick audio video test so you can test it out. I have the camera above where the lens is, so you gotta make sure you look at the lens, but it's nice because you can frame yourself. This is the 1X lens and you can switch it on the fly. So if I wanted to go ultra wide, that's possible as well. But again, you wanna make sure you're not looking away from the actual lens, you gotta look at the camera. So we'll see how the audio is, it's kind of loud around here. I also wanted to show off some picture examples, starting with the zoom lens to show off those capabilities and then moving along to just some standard shots in different lighting, different color situations to take a look at. And one thing I really wanted to point out was the portrait lens, just a few portrait shots side by side, specifically this one of Daniel zooming in. Check out those edges, especially around the phone, the hand, where his hair is. It's really incredible. And then another one of MJ, the regular one on the left, I zoomed it in so you could really take a look at that edge detection. I'm super impressed with portrait mode. Here's just a quick one with the selfie camera of me. So anyways, those are my further impressions on the Pixel Fold. More to come in my full review. So drop a comment if you have any questions whatsoever that you'd like answered in that full review. I will hopefully get to them. I got to a lot of your questions from my unboxing in this video. Overall, I have to say I'm having a lot of fun testing the Pixel Fold. Actually impressed with Google's first iteration of a foldable so far. But anyways, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching.